Yeah, I, I can start um, at the 1950s. When I uh, come to Hangzhou as a, uh, a freshman in the academy, uh, at that time, Hangzhou Academy, it's already like one of the top uh, institutions in China. They, they called uh, the school called the uh, Zhongyang Mei Shui Yuan Hua Dong Fen Yuan, mm -hmm. is the Eastern China branch of Central Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, we did have a very good library. Uh, it's from early time, so from Ling Feng Mian. Actually, many books are bought by Ling Feng Mian and the other professors. But it's a not big collection. And uh, all these books are very old. <laughs> it's the 1930s, maybe some 1940s. Uh, in, I'm talking about the, like a foreign uh, uh, book from foreign countries. But after 49, when China completely cut off with the West, there was no way they get any new books. So all these books are very 20 years old. Like I remember one set of uh, uh, word art, um, like a collection of word art published by a Japanese publisher. And those are only things we could get. There's a few modern painters, but mostly like a 19th century, 17th century Renaissance, all of these artists. But in Hangzhou, they have very interesting uh, publication. Start from early 1950. So when I get to school, I was I entered the school 1953. We already had that publication. Is a like a uh, um, translation of uh, uh, materials from the countries outside of China. They called the uh, Yi Su. Something like that, the reference. Uh, in, in the school, there is a small group of teachers who are good in English or French or Russian. So those people are working as a team. They select text and uh, translate, and then publish uh, this uh, little small booklet uh, periodically, maybe once a month or uh, 10 times a year. Uh, most material at that time are from Russia because that's, uh, you know, because of the ideology required. The only, probably the original book they can get is from Russia. Uh, but uh, the texts are not necessary on Russian art. So they may be the Russian writer wrote about Western art, about, the, you know, Western art history, or something like that. So the, a little bit you can get the information from those uh, publications. The, some of the uh, translator, you know, teacher actually were uh, uh, punished or tortured. They, I think two of them passed away during the Cultural Revolution in a kind of a uh, labor camp uh, because they are, they had a. Uh, what they would call the anti-revolutionary history. You know, one was uh, working for uh, Chiang Kai-shek government, another was studying in Japan or something like that. This all become a really a back, uh, uh, yeah, a history. Then they were treated as an enemy. Uh, but one of the crime, you know, it was uh, translate foreign materials to the student. Uh, so after the Cultural Revolution, when the government uh, raised the ban, let uh, the book and the magazines come to China from outside. So that was uh, the opportunity for the school. Uh, but uh, it was not um, easy to get because they, they all have to go through this uh, international uh, bookstore is run by government. So they were uh, uh, screen all the books, what did the book come in? And even they pick up the catalog, you know, what, what they should order. So to us, it was not very helpful because of we, at that time I was a young teacher in the school. We want to know like things about 
the modern modernism or even after modernism we know what we want to know the um, contemporary art but uh, you, you didn't get a book from <laughs> the international bookstore uh, even you couldn't order from them because they they only choose what they thought safe right um, but then after a couple of years uh, we were offered opportunity uh, from the international bookstore. They said that they could organize a book fair, a book show of, uh, on the arts subject. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think they made money at that time by introducing like um, medical books mm -hmm. or some science books. They, they make a special book fair for this profession. Mm -hmm. And then they sold to a university. So they become a pattern of uh, making money for this uh, uh, bookstore. Then someone, I don't know who, <laughs> someone suggests, why don't you uh, work with the academy? So they contact our school. This was uh, 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 79 or 78, something like that. I don't exactly remember the uh, date. Uh, so uh, the school um, actually had a kind of a discussion about uh, should we do this or not. Uh, at that time, we have a very good vice president, Wang Dewey. Mm -hmm. he, he was very open. Actually, he was, you know, he used to be a really hardline administrator. He's a, he's communist, of course, and he had this background as a little red, uh, red army soldiers. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, always is on the left side mm -hmm. of the leadership. But uh, after the Cultural Revolution, he changed. When Deng Xiaoping started as an open policy, and he was really for it. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he played a very important role in changing, uh, you know, open up the school, Hangzhou Academy. I work under him. So he talked to me, he said, Shen, should we do this? You know, this is all. Uh, someone offered this chance. I said, of course, you know, we, we should we, we should get uh, more book uh, because our library was very poor. We used to have this very old uh, material, you know, we need to really add the new materials. So after a couple of meetings, the school decided to go and then talk to Beijing to the uh, book, international bookstore. And then they said, uh, why don't you send someone who knows the English or the foreign language, that we will give them a catalog. They can pick up whatever the book you need. And then we will input those books, have a fair, then after that, you could buy the book. Uh, so then the school sent uh, three teachers to Beijing. Myself, another uh, teacher uh, in Guangyu, his name, he's uh, uh, the teacher of uh, perspective. Uh, but he also uh, reads English well. And uh, then the third one is not from our uh, academy, it's from publishing house. He also graduated from Hangzhou, uh, uh, Hangzhou Academy. But he worked as an uh, editor for the local publishing house. His name is, uh, I think he's a Si Tu Chang. I don't remember we had a budget, but uh, we try to cover like a, a different uh, period of time and then countries. Uh, but the, I think mainly uh, the book are from Japan and the Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, some from the United States, not too many. Uh, we, we make lists. Eventually, the company, the bookstore, they have to uh, make a final selection. So if uh, we require too much, then they probably they reduce that. Uh, I couldn't find the list that we provide to them, but fortunately, the school, the library, they find the list they purchase for the first time. I have a copy of this list uh, that was very interesting. Uh, but anyway, we work that week, a week very hard to select the title. And uh, 
when we get back, uh, Sutu got sick because he had some heart problem we didn't know. But he worked so hard and he got really sick. And very soon he passed away. So I always remember this because he, he is the one who uh, actually contributed to this change. But now, of course, nobody remember him. He passed out so long. But he was the one who <laughs> joined us you know, to uh, uh, contribute to this event to bring the book, which influenced many, many young artists. So we have to remember him. There was a, a rumor said that the school sold uh, a car right. uh, you know, to, make, yeah. to have enough money to buy this book. Yeah which uh, partially true, not, not uh, totally. It become a kind of a, uh, yeah, yeah, a mess, because uh, this is a good s story. Every school, they, the students love the story. They would tell their leaders, they, look at Hangzhou. The leaders, you know, they sold their car and to buy books for the students. Uh, but the, the truth I remember is that the school sold an uh, old truck. <laughs> The, this truck is already, uh, you know, overdue. It <laughs> should <laughs> go to, yeah, should, should uh, be uh, in a junk place. But then, that's why a lot of young artists actually, they uh, apply to Hangzhou mm -hmm. to study. Because the library, they like the library, not that they teach. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also we are open, not only open to the student, uh, the library open to teacher, student, but also open to a student from outside. Oh, really? Yeah. So the people, if they have a, at that time, you have to have a letter of uh, recommendation introduction. If you have the letter, you can come and the library will let you sign up and then you go to see the book. So many schools from other campus come to, right. to read. Uh, I, I read like uh, someone uh, memoir, like Xu Jiang said, at the beginning, they were not allowed to uh, borrow the book or you know even taking the book by themselves. I have to go with a, a teacher. Like uh, I would go with my student there and they show them each page. I, I was the only one can turn the, uh, turn the page. I don't really remember, but you know, if Xu Jiang, he <laughs> wrote that, so it must be uh, true. The first uh, year, I think it's uh, 1977, right? I can also uh, was there participating in this uh, select. Yeah, 77. Um, at that time, because the, all the academies in China closed for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So there is a, you think about this huge country, even like a, say, one city, you have a one student, uh, one talented young artist who want to go to school. Then the whole China, there's a hundred, thousands, right? So there is really a lot of students want to come to the campus. So when uh, the school announced that uh, now we are reopen, we are, uh, uh, enrolled students, we get uh, uh, tons of uh, applications, portfolios, sent it to the school. I remember the post office has to send this by truck, <laughs> not like a mailman. <laughs> you have to really drive a truck, have all this you know, package. So there was no way you select in the really careful process. It's so uh, fast because we have to screen all this portfolio in like a few days. Then you can you cannot interview everyone, right? So you have to first, you know, select maybe a couple of hundred, and then you look again. Then maybe select the fifty. Then you interview this fifty, and you from them you choose maybe ten. So that's the process, and. Uh, I remember the first, I even took a picture of this. The first screening was the whole uh, class building, like many rooms we use. We just put those portfolio on the floor.
So I believe a lot of talent <laughs> it was nice. it was lost it was their nice. chances. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we we cannot really help. But uh, of course, you know those artists who, uh, you know, clearly stand on the other shoulder. Those artists, we we pick up. So you know, like uh, like Huang Yunping mm -hmm. or. Uh, Zhang Pei Li. Yeah, so those are the, the, you can see from portfolio. You know, as a teacher, you can see it. That they are already, they are already mature artists. Mm -hmm. They did very well. I, I don't think we were so uh, that clear mm -hmm. at the time, you know, what kind of uh, uh, artists they were, you know, those uh, the young students would become. Uh, so you choose that by very general kind of a, uh, um, how do you call that? The standard means that you're you're smart, you're you know, you're talented. You, uh, look at uh, look like uh, hardworking. You know those kind of uh, things. Uh, I think how what do you call that is like a, uh, the the um, direction of those students. I think they gradually. Um, built in the school when they come to this because the school has its tradition. I think from 1930s when Ling Fu Mian set up school, the school has its atmosphere and they also they choose the professor, the faculty member by that kind of a standard. So in, you compare the uh, faculty member in Beijing at that time, you will see Hangzhou probably is more liberal or more diverse than Beijing, and uh, you will have like a uh, Fang Ganming or a Ling Feng Man, Fang Ganming or um, uh, Pan Tian Shou. You know, in Beijing, probably it's more like a dominate by a realistic style or something like that. Um, also, Hangzhou and the whole area like Shanghai and Hangzhou. They used to be more liberal than North, and uh, it's more open and have a more opportunity to uh, um, uh, connect with outside. I think that's all influenced mm -hmm. the student. Yeah. Later on, I, I get this scholarship. I had a chance to go to the United States. So at that time, I thought my mission was, because I was the first one to uh, take this grant to uh, North America, I had to gather as small as the more mission I can get. Mm -hmm. So I visit, uh, during these two years, I visit um, Canada, United States, all the city, different <laughs> museums, and Mexico, and then, I went to Europe. I, <laughs> I traveled through Europe, uh, 13 countries, and all the museums. I had my, uh, I brought two cameras with me, one for slides, one for negative, and took thousands of slides and the negatives. And, and the catalog at that time, I couldn't bring too much because the heavy and the expensive item. But the slides, I took really good collection. So when I went back in 1983, I had uh, probably uh, the largest collection of uh, international art the slides. I still have those slides at home. And uh, so I, I was invited to almost every school to give a talk about uh, Western art. Not necessarily contemporary, even talk about the earlier, like, uh, but I had a really good slideshow for them. And the student just didn't want to leave, you know, when I show slides. I remember in uh, uh, one of the longest lecture I gave was six hours. Oh. And another one in Central Academy was four hours. Nobody <laughs> like left to the um, but. The, People at that time were so anxious to know. They had a very little chance to really uh, go out to see the artwork. And when I uh, showed them the slides, I think that uh, slides give very good uh, uh, visual. Mm -hmm. 
information to the students. Color is good and it's large and bright. So I remember I took like a one of the lecture about the public art. I took picture from New York, from Chicago, you know, Mexico City, all this. And those slides are beautiful, really nice. And the very, the students are very impressed. Uh, and some museum, like a Van Gogh museum, I went there, I took slide of every picture. So it's like a book. I brought the whole catalog back. I remember I was in Vienna. I visited this museum. They have a Clement uh, Schiller, those artists. I start to take slides, and then the, uh, the guard said, no, 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 you can't do this. I said, why? He said, our museum didn't allow anyone to take picture. Uh, I said, the other museum, you know, <laughs> British Museum, Metropolitan, they all allow you not here. <laughs> I said, can I see your boss? They said, OK. So they took me to the office. And that I, I met this guy, curator, or not the director, but someone responsible. I said, I am from China, mainland China. Mm -hmm. And our student had no way to see any of those uh, books, you know. Uh, so this is my job. I come here, I can take picture uh, slides and bring it back to show Chinese uh, how those uh, Australian artists are, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, so important. And I'm a professor. And, uh, so then he was uh, moved by my <laughs> speech. And he said, OK, we give you special permits. So I took really good the slides of all the Zen museum collections brought back. So in, in 1983, 84, uh, I think that's a, it's a good time for, uh, in, in China, I, I was not, I, I was free to like uh, give lectures and to talk, show those slides. I didn't really emphasize like uh, what style is important. Mm -hmm. I just want to uh, let them have information mm -hmm. to know what's going on. I remember I wrote the uh, first text on postmodern. It was uh, 84 or 80, yeah, 1984. It just introduced uh, what is a postmodern, and uh, then uh, what's the you know special um, definition about this, and uh, what artists are you know uh, um, considered to be like in this territory. Uh, so I wrote this first text, and then I also wrote about the Western museums. I, uh, I cover many different fields, like education system, and uh, philanthropy, or all this, uh, even market. At that time, I was teaching in Hangzhou. So my uh, boss, there's a wonder way, you know, he said, uh, Shen, I, I heard you study English before. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you can take a test to, you know, for this uh, uh, grant? Then I, I was uh, very hesitant because I said, I, yes, I study English by myself. Like I, uh, when I was a student, we studied Russian. But after school and I become a teacher, I was interested in reading English information. So I went to a night school, mm -hmm. like an evening school. I studied some English, but then Cultural Revolution. So that's, uh, everything stopped. For 10 years, I didn't touch the English book. I don't know if I can pass a text. Uh, but he said, why don't you try? We don't have any other people who can. And uh, so they give me this uh, uh, chance to take a test. Uh, and the, in Central Academy, there are a couple of people, Guangzhou, and the, we all went to Beijing to take it. It's only give me one month to prepare. I was the only one in art passed the test. My written test was uh, like a minus three or something, you know, <laughs> under the score. And the, but the, my oral test was the best. Mm -hmm. So then I was <laughs> offered this grant. And then the, uh, they said, now you can uh, uh, apply a school uh, in the West to go to study. So I said, they said, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go to the United States. And then immediately they rejected me. They said, there is no art in the United States. <laughs> when I come back, it was the 19, uh, end of 1983. China just passed 
uh, another political campaign called the uh, anti uh, Spiritual yeah, spiritual pollution. My colleague all, all said, Shen, you are lucky. If you come like uh, six months earlier, you will be banned. You never, but you, anything you brought back will be criticized. But now, relax again. So now, uh, you feel free to introduce what thing, whatever you think is important. So uh, that's why I was invited to every school to give a talk. Uh, and also the student, uh, the school uh, quickly appointed me as the chairman of uh, oil painting department. Okay, so that's when you were appointed. Yeah, and after a few months, appointed me to also director of international affairs. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a, um, kind of a uh, authority to make some changes, very limited, but uh, some changes. Like But uh, in general, 1980s, late 1980s was a great time. I think uh, a lot of new things happened, and also in the uh, in the school, when I uh, come back, uh, you know, the class of uh, Gen Jian Yi, yeah. Liu Da Hong, they already and uh, doing their graduation work. So I was a teacher of that class, and uh, we encourage them to do much more like an experimental work instead of uh, just a follow the regular type of a mm -hmm. historical painting. Wei no, Guangqing. Wei Guangqing. Yeah, that's class. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, Wang, uh, uh, Wang Lihua. That class I was teaching with another teacher, uh, Jing Yi, mm -hmm. uh, together. And uh, we actually, or both of us agree that the student have to have a, a really creative idea of what they want to do. And we didn't uh, really uh, ask them to uh, like uh, follow the socialist uh, realism style or they have to do a political kind of a content. So uh, that turned out, you know, <laughs> they really uh, diverse uh, subjects, uh, styles, in terms of that. It's quite interesting because it never happened before. But uh, when the work almost finished, because at that time, you know, you always have a faculty members or the administrators that come to see how the student uh, uh, graduation project going. So when they come, they get kind of a shocked. How come you allow the student to allow student to do this? Like a Gang Jianyi, did this painting, so two, two men, uh, one man and a woman sitting there, you know, oh, yeah. doing nothing, the, no, like Expression. a, yeah, emotionless face. And uh, for some teachers, this is uh, like totally not acceptable. You have to smile. <laughs> uh, and so they call a meeting, actually. Because there is two uh, departments. One is our uh, oil painting department. One is the sculpture department. Uh, all these two classes, they had, you know, student have a new idea, new style to train. Uh, other two departments are okay. So they, the uh, academy called a meeting of all the department chairs, uh, some critics together to discuss three days. Other people will say, you know, this is not uh, uh, appropriate, it's not acceptable, you know, waste of time and waste of money, government, uh, educate them, all this, uh, you know, cliche, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but when uh, editor from the party's newspaper, he himself also artist, but he's really, uh, actually, I. I didn't understand why he came to this meeting. He's right. all like a professor, but he was invited. He was one of the critic, like from the local uh, parties uh, media. Yeah, sorry, right. and he was crying in the meet, uh, meeting. He was uh, like tears in his eyes. He said, "I couldn't believe in a socialist academy, I saw this kind of work. It shouldn't be allowed." It was like a totally 
uh, against our discipline, against our goal, and all of this again. I, I was just. <laughs> Kind of amazed to see why you, you you reacted like this. They didn't do anything wrong, and that if you don't like their work, it's okay. You don't need to like them, right? But it's not not really to be hated or you know. So we we try very hard to pretend to protect our student, and even we wrote uh, text under uh, our uh, journal in, in Hangzhou. I think it, my colleague Jing wrote one text, I wrote one text. My, my text mainly said, this is not about art. Because this criticism is not about art. You don't really look at those art. I think it's because you have kind of a, uh, you don't trust those young kids, which is wrong. So, I think we should trust them. They are, they grow up in this, you know, uh, after the Cultural Revolution period. And then they were very anxious to learn and love their countries, love their people. And they love art, you know. So there is nothing wrong. And they may turn out not the, the first class artists, but the, <laughs> they are trying. Yeah, yeah, no reason to cry, no reason to get angry. Uh, so we come to Hangzhou, uh, teach a painting workshop for one month. And uh, it was interesting because at first the school wanted to do the same thing. They selected teachers from uh, our own campus as well as from other university. So we have about so like a 20 teachers, not necessarily young, some really old <laughs> teacher. Uh, but they are selected the group of teachers come to the class. So when I, I because they arranged me to uh, manage this class. So when I talked to Zhao Wuji, I said that this is what happened. You will teach this uh, teachers. Uh, so he's the reason response was uh, kind of a uh, shocked. He said, I thought I would come to teach students. How can you give me? I don't want to teach teachers. So he rejected. He said, no, no, I'm not going to do this. And uh, so it suddenly became really a problem because uh, he was invited to. And uh, there's also government involved. You know, Zhao Gi already had very good name in front. So it's a kind of a diplomatic relationship. If we don't do this, it will hurt. So then I tried to figure out a way how to uh, let him uh, accept it. But also, I fully understand if I'm a teacher, I don't want to teach teachers. <laughs> they already have their own mind. Yeah, their own mind. And uh, you couldn't see a good result from them. So then I talked to my boss. I said, I have a suggestion. He said, What? I said, I am teaching a class. Uh, now in the oil painting department. How about I add my class to this group? So then you have a combination of teachers and the students. And the, so Xiaofeng, uh, president of school, said that that's probably a good idea. And the, it's not against the requirement from the uh, above, from the, you know, the cultural ministry, but also Zhao <laughs> Wuqi will be you know, happy with uh, if uh, he's uh, reasonable. So then I talked to Zhao Wuqi. I said, how about this? I will give you a bunch of students from my classes. So now you teach the students and the teachers. So he agreed. Mm -hmm. So eventually that happened is he had a student of more than what he expected. He had like almost 30 students, a really large class. There's uh, uh, half uh, teachers from other uh, academies from Beijing, Hangzhou, uh, Beijing, Guangzhou, Xi'an, Tianjin, Luyi, uh, all these schools, and Wuhan. And uh, then have a, uh, the student in Liu Dahong's class. Mm -hmm. I think that the impact was uh, very uh, 
uh, visible at that time, not necessarily in style, mm -hmm. but in the approach of uh, creating art. I think that's mainly what Zhao uh, Ji gave to the student, is uh, not the way they used to have. You know, because in the academy, until, even until early 80s, mainly you teach students in the class how to imitate the reality, how to imitate what you see. So this is a, what they call it, this is a strict realistic approach. But Zhao Ghi said, this is a wrong, and you have to use your heart, you have to create a, a space in the canvas, which is not necessarily exist in, or stand in front of you. So it's it's different way of uh, create, uh, you know, creation or making a painting. Mm -hmm. I think that's really changed because uh, only Zhao Ki was allowed to Say tell this to the other teachers. They couldn't. If you it, like, this is a will be against the, the, the rule of the uh, curriculum. And uh, he, I think he opened up the door and uh, let people know how he paint. So he had them set up a model there and he would do a demonstration and the student look at him, he totally doing himself. <laughs> this model is just a reference to him. There's nothing really related. Or, so this is really good because you know, think about that time, you really need someone to show you. Because even myself, I will feel, even my, my mind is more open, but the, when I sit in front of a canvas, I will very easily, uh, very, um, uh, you know, to go to the usual way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means you will, you will look at the, the model, mm -hmm. then you will repeat that. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to change, but then if you learn, there's other people you could do it in different ways, then they say, how come I didn't think about it before, you know? That kind of a um, new way of thinking, new way of seeing, new way of painting, I think that that's the, uh, really brought uh, to the young generation. So even I read some uh, writing by Xu Jiang or by some other artists, uh, they, I think they learn a lot from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody actually really copy his style. Right, right. <laughs>